Morning, Mr. President. Hi. You're a secretary of the Air Force here, Russ Rock. Hello, Mr. President. Good right. to see you, sir. Just great. Good to see you. Honored to be here, sir. No, we're honored to have you. It's nice to be aboard. The last time I was here, you presented and had presented to you your jacket from the uh, Air Force Academy when the uh, a tough team came in. Were you a little bit surprised at their height? Uh, I thought when they came in, I, good morning, John. Uh, I, I played freshman football at Maryland, and, and when I was there in 1951, you know, they were just great big tanks, all from West Natrona, Pennsylvania, yeah. and the Pittsburgh uh, iron yeah. uh, mills and so on, and I thought we were going to see this gang of tigers come in, and for them to have gotten as far as they've gotten when they're no bigger than you or me, and some of them smaller, it's a great credit to them. Well, aren't there some physical limitations in There are. Oh, football? yes, sir. Oh, there I are. wondered about that in football. Oh, sure, and basketball. Uh, that's why to see Navy uh, do as well as they've done, uh, being ranked 15th and 17th in some polls where they can't have, uh, you know, the seven-footers, and they get boxed out in the middle. So these chaps are Come on, great. Chris. You've so got to be a to the cockpit. Good morning, John. Good morning, John. Good, morning, John. Good, morning, John. Good, morning, John. Good to see you. Good to see you, John. Of course, you see, I'm, I'm very pleased to see that happen because having played at 175 pounds in my college, I always had a feeling that, uh, that some of that bulk resulted in a little slowing, and uh, particularly in defense when you could use your hands, uh, you, uh, you could handle the big fellows very well. I, well, I, I got knocked out, Mr. President, uh, seven times in our freshman year. And uh, big Jim Tatum was our coach at the time. And uh, he advised me that for the insurance policies of the school and for my own future, I might want to take up uh, something else that was, because uh, we had nine of the starting 11, uh, the Mojoleski brothers and uh, uh, Bernie Filoni, but nine of the starting 11 wound up playing pro ball on our offensive team for at least nine years, which was, uh, uh, which was a great, a great record. So I wound up being a hell of a quarterback on our Sigma Chi fraternity football team, <laughs> and I stayed alive. Well, of course, you know, and all of the guys who are trying to make the game somehow fairer and safer, actually, you played under the new rules. Uh, I was in about the last of the era in which on defense, you could use your hands, and you could hit with your open hand as long as you did not hit the face. And this made all the difference in the world, because I played opposite. Two men who later went to pro ball, Muso, who with the Bears eight years old, oh, yeah. tackled, he outweighed me 100 pounds. <laughs> and Tony Blazine, and uh, Nagurski called him the strongest man in football. He weighed 245. Oh. But I'd get as low as possible in the line of defense. And when the ball was snapped, that's harder than the fist. My first blow was aimed for the headgear right over the ear. Uh, and you did that, I don't care how big he was, you could get a knee through there. <laughs> so, uh, offense was a little different then. You just had to charge with a shoulder. members of the commission, I thank you for coming to the White House today. And since the commission expires on April 1st, and nobody will say April Fool's Day, <laughs> I'm very pleased to have this opportunity to thank all of you for your work over the past two and a half years. I know that you're aware of the high priority that the Attorney General and I place on fighting and one day eradicating organized crime. And I'm sure the Attorney General will agree with me when I say that your work is bound to be a, a crucial factor in our efforts. And again, so again, thank you very much for all that you've, you've done. And now, Judge Kaufman, I would be pleased to receive the final report that I understand is ready today. Thank you, sir. And I hope I can keep the President waiting for a moment. Until I get through with my remarks. <laughs> All right, <we're> sir. <laughs> the podium is yours. Mr. President, I give you my seat. I wouldn't mean to keep you standing. Enjoy right? <laughs> <laughs> well, this commission a lot. <laughs> you have just become chairman. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> I want to begin.
begin by thanking you, Mr. President, and the Attorney General for his gracious remarks before you came into the room, and certainly Andy Stewart for gracing us with her presence here today. I want you to know that I think that the most sterling uh, achievement of the Commission is that we are probably the only body of government that is really going out of business about March 1st and certainly before April 1st in accordance with Graham Rundman. So we have that distinction. It has been 32 months since you appointed this commission and you designated me as chairman. <clears throat> in that time, we've tried to carry out the ambitious mandate you gave us to explore the nature, scope, and extent of organized crime in the United States. By appointing an independent commission, you recognize that the changing nature of organized crime required a comprehensive new inquiry, the first of its kind, over 30 years. Organized crime remains a potent parasite feeding off the people. It has continued to grow and occasionally to thrive despite periodic attempts to eradicate it. Organized criminal groups form a hydra-headed monster, maintaining institutional survival even as individual members or leaders are apprehended and incarcerated. Moreover, new organized crime groups are emerging to follow in the footsteps of their more widely publicized predecessor. <clears throat> Throughout the month of March, we will be releasing portions of our final report. We hope to have more before you by April 1st. The section we are issuing today on the subject of drug trafficking calls for a nationwide campaign to reduce the demand for narcotics, and the Attorney General spoke about that before you came into the room, thereby depriving organized crime of its largest source of income. There has to be a change in attitude, I believe, on the part of the American people. They have to consider it. They, they have to begin to think of it as quite antisocial to accept the use of drugs. Your wife really has been in the forefront in the fight to combat drugs. And we commend her for that. But unfortunately, not too many citizens adopt that attitude. Law enforcement alone cannot achieve this result. You can pour millions of dollars into this effort to stamp it out, either to interdict drugs or to go to the source countries. You make some impact, but the impact won't be the sort that you will be satisfied with, Mr. President. The, let me just throw some statistics at this group. There are approximately 500,000 heroin addicts in the United States. There are 25 million people who've tried cocaine at least once, and 6 million people are, are actually hooked on it. There are 20 million regular marijuana users. And we frequently hear the cry of, why don't you legalize marijuana? Because you can't enforce it. And as a judge, you can understand, a judge of almost 37 years on the federal court, it's a very hard argument for me to accept. Uh, now, we recommend vigorous governmental efforts against organized crime, but we believe that all the citizens of this country have a role to play in destroying the power of criminal organizations. And, uh, Mr. President, a statistic given to us recently indicated that almost half of the income of organized crime comes from drugs. It's quite quite an impact on our economy. Think of that. I cannot let this occasion pass without noting what I did before you came into the room, Mr. President. And that is that I know of no administration, and I've been around for a while, that has made the concerted effort to combat organized crime that you and your associates have. Other administrations have tried, but they give up. They abandon. 
Not so with you or Ed Neese or Bill Smith. They continue on and this constant cry that you hear, oh, you will never stamp it out. Why are you wasting your time? It's just such nonsense. What do we do, cutting under to these gangsters? We just can't do that. So, as chairman, I can say that the commitment to common goals displayed by members of this commission was heartening to observe. And I want to commend each and every member of this commission. I've worked with groups over the years. For 10 years, I was involved in the Juvenile Justice Project for the American Bar Association. Oh, they're very spirited people, every one of them. And they all have a view and they all disagree. <clears throat> and many a time I said, what did I ever get into here? But I wouldn't want it any other way. They were all individual thinkers and they all contribute to the final consensus that we have. Hard working and dedicated men and women, and I do want to say to you, Mr. President, we owe them a deep debt of gratitude. I can pick out a lot of individuals like Judy Hope and Barbara Rowan and the others here, but I better stop here before I go through the entire room. <clears throat> 32 months ago, we stood in the Rose Garden and accepted your assignment to help devise ways to remove this malignant cancer from our society. The commission, with the help of Jim Harmon and Rodney Smith, appointed a very, very able staff. Our investigators, most of them are FBI people on loan to us. I don't think the public realizes how effective we were and the kind of investigations that were going on quietly behind the scenes. You have taken a personal interest I know of your background. I know the work you did when you were head of the Screen Actors Guild, and I remember those two characters, Brown and Beyond, in Hollywood. You were in this thing way back before many of these people ever heard of it. And so therefore, you've had a great interest and therefore your strong backing, Mr. President. So, I conclude by saying, no administration has made a greater effort <coughs> to combat organized crime. The challenge is a great one, but its importance to our society is greater. And as we conclude our work, it is my hope that we have made a contribution to meeting the challenge. And so, if you'll come forward with the report at this point. Is that one? Mr. <laughs> President, I <laughs> wonder <laughs> if we can't get carrying a budget around for the rest of the Well, is that for the Well, again, I, Mr. Attorney General, again, I, I thank you all for this. <laughs> and in case you don't lose your interest and continue along the line contributing where you can to, to help in the fight, I have to agree also that much as we must have the interdiction effort we won't let up on that. But the only, the real way that it's gonna be stopped is if we take the customers away from the drugs instead of the other way around. We had a little experience with that in California and we learned something. I'll just give you as a tip if you do remain active in anything of this kind. We found that all us good citizens could stand in front of, say, those kids in school, in high school, and talk to them about drugs. And they weren't listening to us any more than they did to the teachers. But you put somebody up in front of them that says, I was there, I was one, I know what it's like, I did this and I did that. Those kids come forward like this and listen, and the most effective missionaries we can find are to find those that have been um, turned off and are willing to stand up in front and, and admit to it. So we won't overlook anything in trying to make this, this work come true. I must say in just the forerunner that you gave me when I got to the part on organized labor, I began to think that maybe the Screen Actors Guild was the only clean union in the universe. <laughs> 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 Mr. President, if we could impose on your schedule for one yes. more minute, we probably could get through all of this. 
a group photo with you. I was so still going to ask him to come up here. Come up here. Yeah. 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 And, and Ewing will be pretending to block you. And I said, what do you mean pretend? <laughs> <laughs> Chairs out from here. So. Thank you. 